Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Good. And I have a little way of closing as well. I need to get back to the National Resources Committee hearings. Very Thank well. You, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Paul. Uh, how many uh, proponents? Uh, we'll take the proponents, obviously, first. Uh, if the proponents can kind of, if there's space in the front, just sort of move up to the front. Thank you, Chairman Ashford, members of the committee. My name is Byron Batian. I'm a senior counsel with the Alliance Defense Fund, a nonprofit public interest law firm that advocates for, educates about, and defends religious liberty. Can you give us a, just spell your last name? Yes, Batian, B A B I N O N E. Thank you. I am testifying in support of LB 912. The bill's terms rationally achieve the legitimate government purposes of improving interstate commerce and the effectiveness of municipalities in eliminating discrimination against those protected classes identified by the legislature. LB 912 achieves those ends consistent with the Nebraska and federal constitutions. LB 912 concentrates the resources of the business community on eliminating discrimination against groups the legislature has determined are in need of protection without subjecting businesses to the impediments of non-uniform laws. This uniform statewide approach to defining protected classes frees businesses to engage in commerce while meeting their civil rights obligations as mandated by the state legislature. It will free businesses from navigating a patchwork of protected classes that could be as divergent as the number of municipalities and political subdivisions in the state. The bill allows companies to do business more predictably, more smoothly, and more cost effectively since they are not subjected to the expense of multiple compliance schemes depending on where they are doing business in the state. LB 912 focuses government resources on enhancing protections for vulnerable classes recognized by the legislature and directs all concerns about class discrimination to the attention of the legislature for statewide consideration. This bill is a proactive measure that prevents municipalities from creating novel protected classes, <coughs> which would necessarily force <coughs> municipalities to divert resources away from protecting the classes the state legislature has carefully chosen and specially mandated for protection, such as race, religion, sex, and ancestry. It also fosters careful statewide deliberation by the legislature of all proposals to protect civil rights, and it ensures that multitudinous voices from all corners of the state will be able to debate these important public policy questions. LB 912 is compatible with the Nebraska and federal constitutions, easing burdens on commerce while concentrating government resources on enforcing state anti-discrimination laws easily satisfy constitutional standards. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak in favor of LB 912. Thanks, Mark. I mean, my only question is there, there aren't any, as far as I know, I don't know about what they're doing, I was just asking a lot. Of there aren't, it, it deals with gender and, and uh, uh, sexual orientation. I'm not aware of any other local ordinance in the state that covers that particular issue. Uh, nor am I, Senator. So I, I'm just wondering what the, so the harm would be that there may, it may occur, if, if there's only one city that chooses to do this, and again, I'm not sure if Lincoln does. They do. So Lincoln does. So Lincoln and Omaha may be the only two, and maybe others, I don't think so. But if those are the only two, uh, the, the point you're making is that that's not, that's unconstitutional or it's potentially unconstitutional or interference with interstate commerce because the, the point is, uh, Senator, is that it's constitutional to have the state legislature address. No, I guess that part of it. Okay. But, 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 so the, the harm here is that Omaha and Lincoln would have an ordinance and, and if nobody else does, the harm is what? Well, I don't think there is any harm. Okay, Senator, I think that if, if everybody's allowed to participate in the political process and come to the state legislature to debate matters of discris discrimination, sure. especially when you're talking about protected classes, uh -huh. and that's a big deal, and that's an important thing, and it involves a fundamental 
change really to the anti-discrimination statutory scheme, then all voices from the so state have the proper to places to be here. Yeah, right? I think so. I think everybody, from what if you have, like in the case of Omaha, if you have a population that represents 35 or 40 percent of the of the state, which is a pretty big chunk, maybe it's 40 percent, I don't know exactly, but besides they want to enact an ordinance dealing with uh, discrimination against uh, on the basis of sexual preference, and the other parts of the state don't have a desire to do that. Uh, I'm trying to try to figure out what the well, this this law would not allow municipalities to add protected classifications, whether they're um, protected classifications like personal appearances or source of. The, uh, no, I know it doesn't apply just right. to, to that, and I'm not saying that it does. I'm just that's the, the topic. Of well, the those those cities would would not be able to add protected classifications to their ordinances, but the, but the interested persons and those with the state could come to the state legislature to have the state statutes amended. But well, let's say, let's take an exception, let's say there was an ordinance passed in Omaha that said that the, the people of the city of Omaha could vote to, to add a protected class based on sexual orientation to its ordinance. There you have direct voter participation in an ordinance regarding that issue. Do you feel that that's a problem? Or that the better, are you saying the better place to come is here? It's not necessarily harmful to do that, but the better place to debate it is, is in the legislature? Yes, and that, that's what LB 912 does. And the reason is, is because that's a pretty, uh, if, if, you have, if you have problems of, of discrimination, especially if you're saying you have those kinds of problems in the largest city in the state, then it's probably something the state legislature should take a hard look at. That's what LB 912 allows. But what if they take a hard look at it and decide they don't want to do anything about it, even though the majority of the people of the city of Omaha want to do something? Well, that's an indication that the majority of the, of the people in the state of Nebraska don't want to change that. And so then you have all the voices of, of the state speaking on the matter. Hello, my name is uh, Shane Strong, that's called S-T-R-O-N-G. Uh, and I'm here today to uh, talk to you about my opposition to LB 912. Uh, I come to you uh, before you for three reasons. Number one, I'm against this because I'm a veteran. Number two, I'm against this because I'm an independent. And number three, I am against this because uh, I am a brother of two homosexual individuals. Uh, first off, as a veteran, I came to Omaha, my wife and I both served in the Air Force by way of off an Air Force base. Uh, if you want to talk about potential discrimination, maybe not being one part of the state as the other, there aren't a lot of veterans, but we do have an awful lot in Omaha. And we came uh, and we stayed here in Omaha and we had a really great time and we were both pointless. And I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the Defense Language Institute, but after 9-11 it uh, made headlines when 75 Arabic and Farsi linguists were kicked out and don't have some tell post 9-11. Uh, very uh, mission integral uh, part of our wars against terror. And uh, in my time, I saw individuals who went through basic training successfully, uh, were participating in the program, which had a 50% attrition rate, by the way, successfully, who uh, ultimately were reduced to a single word, dishonorable, uh, reduced to a single word, uh, homosexual. So I have seen workplace uh, discrimination and hostile work environments outside of the war zone. The government was uh, trying to root out people. They told us never to go to a uh, uh, the gay bars in Omaha because OSI was taken out of the place. So that's one thing. Uh, so as a veteran, uh, I have, I've heard the proponents of this bill compare homosexuals to drug addicts, uh, compare them to uh, tattooed individuals. I, I compare them to veterans because it's a choice to serve. Uh, we are not in a compulsory military state. And I have uh, served with college homosexuals and uh, with great distinction and honor. Uh, secondly, uh, I am an independent. I see this bill as turning civil liberties on its head. The federal government sets, states a, uh, sets a minimum for the states to follow, and the states uh, comply with that. The state sets a minimum for the cities to follow, and they comply with that. I don't see why the state is interested in trying to take away rights that the city wishes to give its people. Uh, I, I do not think that the legislature here, the Unicameral, is the only place that we can have this debate. 
Uh, and I don't think that's necessary for us to have to go. I am a brother of uh, uh, two homosexuals who are very dear and uh, near to me. And uh, they, they do uh, have occasions where uh, they know individuals or they themselves have experienced discrimination in the place. They're my brothers. I want to do right by them. I think that Omaha can do better than that. I think that uh, Nebraska can do better than that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shay. Any questions? <laughs> Next, uh, roll call. Good afternoon, Senators. Hello, Chairman Ashford. Um, I'm here today to oppose Senator McCoy's uh, Bill 912. Um, they're, they're hopefully soon, oh, sorry, Jane Cloud, K L E B, representing Bull Nebraska, I'm not just representing myself, representing the organization of Bull Nebraska, which is a progressive advocacy group. Uh, in the state. Um, I think there's going to come a day when, and hopefully it's very soon, when our state has the dialogue statewide about rights for the LBGT community. Um, it has been a void in our state. Um, I think it's inevitable that the day will come. Uh, we have a lot of talented, uh, very giving uh, parents and children that are gay in our state that deserve equal protection under the law. Uh, Omaha is having that dialogue right now, and anything that would stop that dialogue, um, I just don't think is the state's business uh, to get it. It's clear that this is and needs to be a statewide law as well, um, but if we have cities that are ready to move forward with that, I don't think that we as a state should get in the way of that. Just like I don't think that you know the state should get in the business of cities moving forward on solar energy or on wind energy or other very necessary things that cities in particular are doing. Um, and so I'm here really in solidarity with the LGBT community as well on a very personal level. Um, my little girl's godfathers are both gay, and as a single mom when I lived in D.C., I'm not sure what I would have done without them. So I know that there's lots of other families like that in Nebraska that are deeply affected by uh, discriminatory practices. So thank you. Thanks, Jim. Good comments. Uh, any questions? No, I don't see any questions. I knew we'd take that there. <laughs> Former Senator Keels here. I knew I'd get you. <laughs> I feel like I'm the, the codger pulling up behind the rest of the group <laughs> here, as a matter of fact. But um, I am Shelly Keel, uh, K I E L, and uh, I'm president of Citizens for Equal Protection, and I have been president actually for a few years now. And uh, this is some of the most exciting things I have, one of the most exciting things I've seen happen to protection of civil rights. Um, and I, like Councilman Gray, have uh, suspicions about the timing of, of LB 912. Um, it's not exactly like this element in the room. It's, it's very clear that this was brought because uh, it was an effort to, to throw a roadblock in the way of uh, the ordinance that uh, Councilman Gray is bringing in order to enact, hopefully enact, uh, discrimination, prohibition against the LBGT community. <coughs> And I thought, uh, as I've considered everybody who has who's talked to you today and the questions that have been asked, and as a former policymaker myself, that uh, it might, you, you all know the <coughs> Hippocratic Oath, part of which is first do no harm. And I've also, I've always thought that perhaps that ought to be an oath that policymakers take to. First, please do not do harm to any group. Um, and I see LB 912 as intending to harm particularly. Um, you know, we can talk around this, you know, all day and all night, but uh, th this is the intent of this, of this legislation, is to keep discrimination prohibition from being done uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, you know, it's happened before, it will happen again. Uh, people have a problem uh, with uh, a line of people live their lives sometimes. But what I would ask this, this committee to consider is, that first, please do not do harm to um, a class of people in the state of Nebraska and in Omaha, and also to um, hopefully all of you be invited to the party we'd like to have in Omaha when this ordinance is actually passed. So thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Shelly. Uh, any questions, Shelly? <coughs> thank you very much. So that concludes the hearing on this bill.